We're very excited too, and uh, there's a, a reason for that. David versus Goliath, it's a common overused trope in competition, but here it fits because there's no greater Goliath in Dota than Puppy, both in stature and experience. And you would be hard pressed to find a more fearless David than Thunder Awaken, right? Puppy has been the, the Goliath yeah, at every TI, right? Well. There's a reason he's the last 11 TI man standing. Great. And yeah, yeah, I've been playing against this Thunder Awakened squad for many years. Going back four years ago when they had no accolades, they didn't care what anybody thought about them. And now that they have a couple under their belt, they definitely don't care. These guys show no fear and they play like it all the time. Somebody's gonna die in this match, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, Thunder, they already are the, the they're the killers, right? Of this entire oh. tournament, they're the team that is gonna run at you and kill you over and over and over again. It's gotten them top six already, already into blowing the South American previous placements at TI out of the water. If they can go to top three, holy crap. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what happens in this match because no matter what it is no matter what the outcome is you can guarantee it's gonna be a goddamn bloodbath absolutely uh, these guys grew up in the region where the killers shine they don't know anything else they were born into it in a sense and there's a reason why Picasso and dark mago are two of the highest stack killers of this entire tournament mm -hmm. these guys win the game through sending you back to the fountain objectives be damned sometimes they're coming for the blood you have to be prepared if you're secret. And if there's one team that can prepare, I mean, it's got to be the mastermind himself. Mm -hmm. You've seen Heen with the drafts the whole event. They're clicking on all cylinders. They've got the Zayats. Earth Spirit that has been extremely dominant in these route you situations. So Thunder Awake can dive too deep to get caught off guard in this game. Suddenly you're in a situation where Disruptor and Earth Spirit are chasing you down. The killers become the killed script can get flipped real fast. Now, you were telling me something about a little bit of interesting stat about Secret and Thunder. Thunder, they have these killers, right? You're talking about, you know, between their mid and their off lane, bunch of killers. That leaves their carry to just become a beast, right? Yes. <laughs> this is a team built around their one position. Going back, those old four protect the one days. Well, it's four kill for one. <laughs> uh, but yeah. because he's soaking up pretty much the largest percentage of net worth per team of any carry at this event. And then on the flip side, Crystallis is down there at pretty much the lowest. Yeah. So you have a dichotomy here where Thunder prioritizing their one position, playing through Picaz in secret. Crystallis has had to take a step back because, again, they're playing more through Nisha and Rezo. Yeah, and Rezo's a carry player himself, so he's used to getting <laughs> a bit of network there, but it's a very interesting dynamic. And I mean, these drafts are set up to do that, right? They picked this drought earlier. They're setting it up for this Lashrak. Yeah. To really shine and carry in this game. Seconds to Very strong BKB timings for Secret as well. A lot on this Morphling shoulders, and every time I've said that, the cause delivers. Oh, he certainly does. We're going to start setting up for the bounty runes that are coming in. You can see uh, both Thunder and Secret are just going to be holding around the mid lane. We'll see if we get any early first blood action. But is there a particular hero that you're looking to shine on the side of Secret? I think it's Zayats, right? It's yeah. gotta be this Earth Spirit. He has so much of their catch control, begins. especially going in those mid late game fights. Earth Spirit, if he gets some early kills in the laning phase, is a vastly different hero. And then if you can get to that BKB, he becomes a beast, right? Yeah. You have to be able to get to these timings though, otherwise you roll in and you're gone. So to me, it's really about how much Zayats pops off in the early game and gets to his item timings. It's gonna. It's really what's gonna enable Nisha as well in this game. He can run in and, and be that frontliner, tank some stuff up, but... He needs someone else to go in with him and help provide the control. It's funny how we talk about Rezo being kind of a carry player, and he has certainly had some incredible carry performances at this tournament from the off lane. But at the same time, he's also had some performances with Zayats where they're just running around together. Oh. Uh, it seems to be, I, I don't think I've ever seen a duo of the three, four that is more tied together than Rezo and Zayats. They seem to be just hand in hand, uh, running around, killing things nonstop. Now, when it comes to lanes, they didn't actually set it up that way. We see Puppy playing the Disruptor. They didn't want to do a double melee setup. Instead, they have Zayats paired up with a Drow Ranger in bottom lane and the ranged Puppy here with uh, Rezo, just to make their lanes a bit easier. Yeah, makes sense. Running this double melee lane into the Morphling, you're not going to be able to pressure him too much. and. You're just going to feel bad over time, so at least Puppy can make some, some noise up here. You know, get a little stuff done. And then you get this uh, melee range pairing for the Drow, which is always nice for this hero. You have a body to frontline for and tank up some spells. That's the name of the game. 
this is going to be a pretty fast early game for Thunder. Whenever you play this Mars mid, you are really looking to up the tempo and take the fights around the runes with the early arena. You have this offlane Pango, who's another very strong skirmisher, especially when paired with this Maiden, who also went in the offlane. Kind of a throwback to that old four position Maiden meta. Of course, Pandamu is still bringing it up. Very high damage supports for Thunder Waken. Snapfire Maiden on the back of these two skirmishes. Yeah, at the same time, though, these two team fighters, they're in a lane matchup where they're a melee hero up against a ranged hero that is going to abuse them. Uh, so we'll definitely have to keep an eye on both their CS and their net worth to see how they walk away from this laning phase, because I imagine they're going to have to be blown through some regen just to stay in. All about the early level advantage for these dual lane skirmishes. Matthew going to lay into Puppy here a little bit in the river. I mean, he has the move speed advantage. Oh, yeah. He should just be able to Chasing run him down, down here. Puppy, at best, you can try and maybe swerve into the Roshan pit and hopefully deny that first blood. He's going to pop the Fairy Fire, pops the Salve, draws awkward. the aggro, gets the Salve canceled. A Bash comes out. That's a little awkward. Oh, Matthew times it very nicely with the cookie. He had that one in his back pocket, pulls it out, and uh, gets the first blood. Yeah, the tip on top of it as well with the voice line. He was thinking that all the way through. Had plenty of time to think about it. And very nice start for him. Again, that's your four position in the safe lane. Matthew, he's shown on this snap fire. It's a South American specialty. Absolutely destroy you in these fights until you get to those BKB timings. So yeah, you were talking about this hero uh, early on in the tournament. You thought Snapfire was going to be one of the heroes that was going to be a bit more prevalent, and you said South America was one of the regions who played it fast. Yeah, this hero's just amazing in the mid game fights. He scales well as well. This new shard, I think, threw people a little off in terms of how the range interacts, but people are getting more used to it now. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pick it up this game. Again, the laning's pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, a little mango smoothie form. Yeah, regen it back up. Matthew just wants to keep that pressure up. I mean, the gods have been totally free lane. Uh, though he's not actually stopping Renzo from doing well in CS. They're pretty much even between the two of them, so. That is the downside of chasing Puppy. You get the first blood, you enable yourself. You do give, you do give Renzo that one-on-one. -on -one. He's had to burn pretty much no region. I think he's used one tango this entire laning phase. For a melee versus range core matchup, sure, Morphling's not the best at using early. Renzo's having a great time. And he's gonna go for it. Kill. Jumps onto Matthew. And the damage being done with the Thunder Strike, and one last hit is barely enough for Puppy. You have to get the kill. Oh, and because of that, he's got his level two. He'll get pop the glimpse now because he's already morphing his strength, so he should be totally fine. But it's decent pressure added on to the carry. And that right click, it definitely hit at the top of the damage range there. Yeah. <laughs> fairy fire. I didn't think it was going to kill him, and uh, I don't think Matthew did either. I was setting it up to be like, oh, and he barely does it get the kill, and yeah. well, apparently not. Yeah, you get a free trip That's to base, so not the worst. Cool. Big question is going to be these this six minute rune. It's coming up in a minute 30. Dark Mago is going to get to six here pretty fast. He's doing a really decent job on mid up and denies up in CS versus Nisha. Yeah, maybe he's been harassed quite a bit by the ranged attacks from Nisha, but he's made up for it by being a melee hero, having higher base damage and securing more denies. So uh, level six, as he said, it's going to come in faster and uh, we'll see what kind of rotations are going to happen around that big time. I mean, I expect rotations here for Thunder. You do not want to give this rune to Nisha, and you really want to use this arena, which is going to be up around the same time. Again, do not, you do not want to leave a mid-Mars on an island for too long. You also have pretty independent sidelines. Sure, Pango was not going to pressure Drought on here, but he's pretty much free farming ahead in CS as well. Having a decent time when Ring of Health so he can stay in the lane. He's pretty independent, and of course, Mork is one of the better independent heroes as well. Again, Secret's just trying to weather the super early game storm here and get to their mid-game timing. It's up to Thunder to kind of accelerate the game. Looks like they want to make a call here to go on to Matthew. Not sure what that kinetic field was exactly, but Rezo doesn't follow it up. I mean, any of these side trades right now are decent for Secret, in my opinion, because it'll stop that mid-rotation. They're happy to trade supports. Hefty amount of damage, but Chrysalis, now that he's back at the tower, starts delivering some arrows back. Matthew looks like they tried to go on him and do manage to uh, get the kill there with the glimpse back, but Puppy is going to be chased down by Bacaz and should be just a trade out of the supports. Rezo will put some more damage onto Bacaz, but it's a Morphling. He really can't die here. Not too bad for Secret overall. You're getting a lot of solo XP for this Marcy. Sure, Morph picks up the kill, but you're not stopping him anyway. And Nisha gets to grab the rune for free without getting ganked with this arena. Yeah, that's super nice. 
the fights just continue in the side lanes. Apparently, the support's not caring about securing the power runes at all, as you said, and just uh, focus more on getting these kills. Zion's falls in the bottom lane. Top lane back to it. Glimpse onto the morph lane, really keeping the pressure on him. He's got raindrops, though. Looks like he's going to have to morph all the way to agility form, pop his fairy fire and stick, and actually giving a salve as well. Yeah, he's doing just fine. Is there a more annoying carry to harass? Yeah, seriously. It feels pointless half the time, but if it uh, keeps him from being able to get CS, as you can see, the net worth between both the Morphling and the uh, the Marcy is pretty even, so. These are very good job lanes. Puppy, you looking for that glimpse? Mid, yeah, right? that's a level one glimpse. Not yeah, quite the range. Points. <laughs> And Zayat's also TPing mid to get the bottle refill. Now he's kind of lingering around here. Seven minute, not that eight minute rune timing. A little awkward for Secret here, but they're happy to control the bounty. There's just not too much side lane pressure on this bottom lane with the Drow. I think it's pretty hard to kill this Pango. Maybe they try bring Nisha down here, but just not a worthwhile rotation. There's that roll, but I mean, good luck, you know. I feel like later on, the Pango is going to have a bit of a hard time with this duo specifically. I mean, he's dealing with two silences. Those are not very fun to play uh, Pangolier against, but uh, for now, anyway, when it comes to lane, Ring of Health he got, he's doing exceptionally well. 3,200 second net worth. He's got the Arbor Corrosion. He's going to be going back for the Arcane Boots. That was pretty much a dream off lane Pango start. Yeah. This is not a hero that typically just free farms a lane like this. Maybe abusing the fact Drow is kind of slow. Nice roll in kick back straight into the hands of Nisha. He may be able to grab the Invis rune away from Nisha, but won't stop his own death. And I think Thunder, tired of being the ones rolled on here. Time to smoke top and try and get some action done with this arena. This is a move that really has to connect here. Otherwise, Dark Mago is just finding nothing in this early game. Yeah, the fact that we uh, haven't seen an arena yet is a bit of a shame. Let's see how fast Rezu gets out. Not able to get the rebound away. Will be denied by the arena walls. Decent pickup. Definitely going to be happy about that one. Pandamu gets to soak, soak the XP mid on a, a hero in Crystal Maiden that really uses the levels. I mean, this hero has dominated the statistics in terms of win rate. You start getting these, you know, Frostbite, Nova points up, whichever route you want to go. They really pay off a lot more now than they used to. So decent efficiency here from Thunder. To me, the big question is going to be, do they try and use this Pango ult to kick Drow to bottom? How long does Crystallis get to stay down here? Because this is not a carry you want to just leave down here getting solo XP. I mean, it's almost yeah. level 7, and he's just been uncontested. Yeah, it does kind of feel like Thunder playing slower than maybe we would have expected. But we do now have the level 6 on Sacred. So whether he's making a play on the Drow with people rotating or... He rotates to another lane and leads. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, getting pulls off and stuff. Chrysalis is going to be very happy with the way this is going, I think. Meanwhile, Dark Mago is clearing stacks. I don't know if I've ever said that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> he is in the jungle efficiency it up. And apparently he wants to try and get that fast blink dagger. And that makes sense, right? I mean, getting on top of this drow is going to be all so important. A tithe Absolutely. If he can find the Drow, start on the Lesh, there are no real saves in this game when that Arena Spear comes out. Yeah. Uh, there's no hard reset, hard dispel, so Dark Mago kind of has free reign here. I can understand the Blink Rush. It's going to be very strong in this game. It enables his supports. This Radiant's Snapfire Mars combination under goes back since these heroes were put in the game, and it's yeah. strong for a reason. It's going to annihilate these cores before they have BKBs. So I can understand them wanting to get that fast, and here's a second smoke to this top lane, trying to shut down Rezo. I think he smells what's coming, though. Yeah, they have this nice high ground ward that may give him a false sense of security because they are smoked up, but uh, it's going to break Radiant here. Puppy Tossing. walks down, breaks the smoke. Very nice read. I think it's combination. They picked up the power rune in top lane. They're missing for the middle lane a little bit. Rezu got ganked last time. He's like, I'm not going to risk it this time around. That's fair enough. Harvey wonders why they want to go top with this move instead of bottom. Yeah. I mean, the bottom move is longer. It, it takes more time, but... You're going to get the kick out guaranteed, right? If Crystallis wants to dodge that smoke, he has to leave the lane. And this catapult would have killed the tower with Pango just tanking up. Right. Instead, when that smoke fails, they get absolutely nothing out of it. Morph can stay up there anyway. It's like a higher risk, lower reward type situation. Do you think I that know. they have answers to drop? There is. He's going to run forward, gets a small glimpse back. Not a big one, but they do have the stun follow up here. Comes this kisses. 
trying to create some space and Dark Mago, he's going to be perfectly fine. And they're actually at the Rolling Thunder. Oh, a jump away from Rezzo barely gets out of that arena. They're going to have more TPs in. Crystal is actually a long TP, but oh, will show up and miss. One second. Oh, barely inside of the range, and they're going to go for Sacred. The Pango's going to die. They immediately threw down the Static Storm to make sure there was going to be no jump away, no splash buckle or anything. And with the Draw Ranger here, it's time to put pressure on this mid tower. Unleashed, Catapult's still alive. They'll get the glyph out of that for sure. So that's going to TP back into mid as well. And the line being drawn top, so they're reading this move. Again, Thunder just not getting the exact fight they want out of that situation and feels like Secret stalling them out a little bit, which is definitely advantageous for them. Radiance Anytime you can slow down this team, you're going to be pretty happy with it. Big Ancient Stack. This is usually what the Drow is going to be spending most of her time doing in this awkward 10 to 20, 25 minute mark. It's a lot of time hitting Ancients. Arcane Rune for Nisha. Cannot ask for anything better on this hero, especially pushing towards that Bloodstone timing. Yeah, that's very awkward because you know Thunder wants to make a play. They just picked up the Blink Dagger, so the wrong move. They stumble into Anisha with an Arcane Rune, and he is not immediately bursted down. This could go badly for Thunder, and that would be a very bad sign for the rest of the progression of this game for them. But uh, wait our time. Didn't hide the Blink Dagger at all, so Secret should know about it. Seems like Thunder is just happy to keep the static as well. Again, no move to his bottom lane made yet. Now Secret's the one making the move to their off lane first. Smoke Very breaks late because but... he's going to wait for... Oh, he gets get pulled out of it. And now the silence is ruining Dark Mago, but he does manage to get off the arena with the combination of the two supports playing in the damage. Nisha and now the roll in from Sacred. Perfectly set up the bowling ball, knocking down all the pins of Team Secret. A bit of aggression from Secret that goes completely awry. Thunder. Apparently, their patience is well rewarded. Tries to find a fourth kill in Zayat, but missed the spear, sadly, and uh, we'll have to retreat. They were all ready for that move. Instant pawn, instant TP. This is all their net worth. You got to remember, you attack Makaz, you attack the whole front. Just beautiful spell casting to turn that fight around. I mean, this Warp is a little tankier than maybe they expected, right? He's got Falcon Blade, he's got Dragon Lance, he's mm -hmm. got Shreds. He itemized to skirmish early and fight often. Pays off a little bit here, of course, getting the morph off helps him. Just in general, going for the morph fling, but yeah. him getting off the morph strength, like, they needed a situation where the smoke breaks, but they're not spotted, and they could get an instant static storm on him. It's a glimpse play, and gives him too much time to respond. It's a hard, aggressive move, unless you can concretely just burst down a core at the start of that. Seeker will pay the price. Chasing after him, glimpse back. Throws the spear as he can, but uh, he will die for that double damage rune he picked up. They do have the kisses still, but the roll is going to be able to get it on top of Matthew. No space to be able to cast that big ultimate. He'll turn around and kill Zayat, but Nisha will take the tower in return. Now they're going to try and chase him down. Now the kisses go into play with the Rolling Thunder on top of that. They have the Static Storm to stall up some of the heroes. Panda is there, though, to help finish him off. Nisha falls, silence going out, and jump in from Rezo. His first big jump into these team fights, and he's going to clean up two here pretty easily with the help of Chrysalis, who naps both the kills. Very nice turnaround in that river by Secret. I don't think Zayats was expecting Picasso to be behind that tower. <laughs> yeah. Rolls in ults. He's like, oh, worse here? Uh, not my cup of tea. Still, <laughs> Seeker get the tier one mid out of that as well. And the biggest beneficiary, Kristalls, he comes in and cleans up those kills at the end. Now, all of a sudden, he's the most farmed core on Secret. He is having an absolutely free drow game. And remember, this is a drow that can get powered up by sidekick. Absolutely yeah. devastating Dyer's in these later game fights. Down. It's a drow versus Morphling as well. You're going to cut through all this armor. This is going to be spooky carry for uh, Thunder to deal with going into this late game. And he's again, BKB queued up after Yasha. I mean, if he gets to BKB, he's a god, right? Almost nothing touches him. Yeah, at that point, really, all Thunder has is, like, defensive measures, right? They have the arena walls that they can play around against the Drow, but they really can't kill her very easily. They do not have great physical damage. No, it just comes down to how much net worth does Bakaz has. And he has a lot. <laughs> he is yeah. always a lot he's more farmed. farmed than I think he's going to be. You know, you look at that, you go, where did he get all that from? Four, zero, where two. did he get all that net worth from? He's at 8,500. He's got the same CS, 4, 0, and 2. Well, that'll certainly help out. Yeah, helps when you get the kills and nice fine mid. Quick little arena. Glimpse back. 
Okay. Really trying it for this one. Nisha, does he want to go for it? I don't think so. Sacred has already popped the Rolling Thunder to ensure that we do get our Mars out of here. Ult's baited, but more rune control with Thunder's way. Now the glimpse, perhaps? I actually go for the cookie to try and stall up Puppy. The glimpse didn't really send Matthew anywhere. It's <laughs> such a weird mid skirmish, man. Just five heroes poking each other. <laughs> and both teams seem to be willing to group up nice and early. We saw Chrysalis make that move where he uh, TP'd in to the, the mid tower early on for that team fight pressured. We saw Bacaz do the same. And I mean, I think Secret is ready to meet these guys on the battlefield. They know they do not want to get outnumbered in these fights. And that's. Uh, we'll claim the safe lane tower. You've talked to me about this before, the the fact that TI, people naturally group up when it comes to uh, TI, right? Just something about the pressure and just the nervousness and scare, scary situations, right? Like you feel better just being around your allies. Yeah, you know, you get to hug your teammate, <laughs> you get to rely on him, might yeah. whisper some calming words. Or he might tell Jumped. you you're playing bad, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, he might say, you idiot, that was an illusion. <laughs> How did you not know that? But maybe that soothes you mm. back in the zone. <laughs> exactly what I needed. Either way, really good bait there from uh, Dark Mago. Yep. He's also pushing towards BKB here. It's kind of like the big timing for Mars. You know, how many times does he fight and die before he gets there? That's what's really going to slow down this mid hero. But he's having a decent game getting there. He's really the, bul the bulwark, quite literally, mm. for Thunder in these fights. Just going there, tanking up a lot of this drow damage if he can, giving Pakaz the opening where he's gonna see his target and be able to jump into the drow, jump a support. He already has Manta up as well, so the silence is not as effective. But he will go for Manta and BKB on Orp this game. Probably just the power of Static Storm threatening him on the deep dives. Very defensive itemization here. I mean, what do you think about this mech from Matthew? These aura items have proved to be insanely good in this meta. Especially if you're a team that wants to group up and fight. You're hitting a pretty good window here if you're Thunder. Mech is pretty effective versus the Earth Spirit and the Disruptor damage. Zayat's gonna look for the roll. Do have the Static Storm on top of this one. Mars really not gonna be able to get off much, but the Rolling Thunder is really disrupting things. They finally kill the Mars, and Matthew, nice jump away with the cookie. Zion's finally falls, Sacred has to jump away, and barely keeps his life there as Rezo Looks to chase, but uh, a blink should easily get Sacred far enough out of here. And those Drow hits are already hurting. Yeah, they are. Like, you really have to think about this Marcy-Drow combo, and if you're not on top of it, every other hero is basically a distraction. Nisha just has to go in and live as long as he can, and it's going to set up the fight for Secret, especially if they can start on Mars. You don't have this arena coming out. You don't have any of this control. It really hurts the Thunder supports. Sacred's doing his best to disrupt this fight, but... I mean, he does not have the armor or sustain to deal with Drow Ranger yet. Uh oh, Nisha. Slowed down by the kisses. He is super tanky, though. 2200 HP. They landed most of those kisses and a bit of extra damage from the swashbuckle, and it really wasn't that close. So that cannot feel very good for Thunder. But uh, earlier, the win percentage favored them by a decent, like, 10%. Why, why do you think that is? Thunder favored? Yeah. Well, maybe it just likes the cause. Yeah, well, I like him too. That's fair enough. That guy's Gabe, a solid carry. Oh, Gabe put in a little extra in the formula. <laughs> Radiance it's seen Bacaz morphling before. It's, it's the Bacaz factor, understandable. It really is. I mean, I think for the next five or so minutes, that's a short window, but their skirmish power is still stronger. It, but it's dependent on bursting Nisha, and Nisha has no fear in this game. Yeah, he's got they, Band Brace, he's got Cloak, Ograx, he is rushing the tank ability. He knows, I'm a run in, I'm a front line, throw your spells on me, I don't care. I mean, like you were saying, 2200 HP on this Lashrak. You had a BKB on top of that? No, Nobody's touching that on the no, side of Thunder, not for a while. Outside of the Thunder lineup, they are almost all magic damage for these early fights, which they didn't really get to go their way. Mm. It shifts a lot more emphasis to Pakaz to be able to deal the physical to bring this Lashrak down. And he went kind of defensive items, right? Yeah. He doesn't have this super early Scotty or the extra damage to pump through. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. oh no, he blinked into him! Oh no! Disaster! It was hidden in the side, but ends up blinking directly into Zayas. That is just uh, real sad for Sacred there. And that gets Nisha that much closer to uh, his BKB, which we just talked about how important that's going to be.
Thunder, though, I mean, the one thing is, they get these BKBs on Secret, but we do have really strong initiation on the side of Thunder, right? We've got the Blink Dagger on, on uh, Mars, Blink Spear, super fast. You might be able to catch them before they BKB. Same goes with the Rolling Thunder, right? If you can land them, you're in a good spot. If they get the BKB off, you're in a rough spot. <laughs> and there's a lot of BKBs coming out here in the next few minutes. All right, you're, the Zayats one is going to be the farthest, but Kerstalis pretty much has us off this camp. Nisha's flying out, I believe. There it is on the courier, and Rezo has his after this wave. So you have three cores lining up here. Triple BKB timing for Secret. You already know Puppy is making the call. It's time to, to clinch a fight, close the map out, take a Roshan, try to hit our window and never look back. Yeah, and that's a super scary part, right? That Roshan factor, right? Once you start that snowball of getting these Roshans, I mean, you have talked to me on and on and on about the power of the second and third Roshan. So the earlier we get this first one, you know, the, the bigger that power spike. And hell, the earlier just, the power spike. They're just skipping the fight step and just going straight yeah, to the road. Yeah, apparently. They're just like, whatever. Going home. They can try and come to us. We'll take the team fight. If not, 22-minute Roshan. They give the Aegis over to Nisha. So if you thought you could kill him once by surprising him with the initiation, hitting the stuns, chain stunning it, preventing the BKB, well, that's now all out the window. Another arcane rune as well. He's an absolute monster. This is not an easy fight for Thunder. They're gonna try and start with the stuns. No BKB for Rezo. Yeah, they're gonna be able to keep this nice chain stun. Rezo is decently tanky, but though. maybe not good enough. Okay, the BKB goes right through those arena walls. And now with the disruptor here, they can pull some more heroes in or maybe not. Puppy misses Static Storm and is now gonna be able to get a glimpse on Crystal Main. Not much there. Nisha's just running through heroes though, one after another. Dark Mango, look at him with the TP out. No, Rezo denies it. He comes back in for fresh blood as Panda, well, Good try, my friend. Does what damage he can, but ultimately will not be able to stand toe-to-toe -to, -toe to Nisha's firepower. All of Thunder going to try and retreat here. Fortunately, there is no Disruptor up anymore, so everyone else is going to be able to escape. But again, I'll be buying back for that, trying to find something again, so a little bit of value for Thunder, but that's yeah. just an impossible long fight to take, right? You're going through the Lashrak twice with an Arcane Rune. Good job to focus some of the supports down early. Get the targets you can. That Glimmer Cape kept cu Puppy up a long time. You're gonna need some detection next round. But it is the name of the game. You gotta get the stuns before the BKB. Rezo lives though, gets his off, and he's out of there. I mean, Marcy does Marcy things. See you later. And if they Oz just has to man fight. It's hard for him to just stay in this fight for too long after the BKB. Yeah, look at that. That physical damage he's doing to Nisha is yeah, totally <laughs> outdone by the Bloodstone heals. Yep. It's doing nothing. And I can't help but thinking if they had managed to, to keep Rezo chain stun and kill him there, then he doesn't come back and stop the Mars TP. In which case, you know, that, that team fight actually looks a lot better for Thunder. Forever. Right? Taking Mars out in this game means you're taking sidekick out. A lot of damage on that Drow or himself. I mean, that's how Marcy works, so yeah. it's a big target for Thunder to hit, but you have to it and chain it right. <laughs> this time around, it's twice now, he's had some close calls, but this time he will not be blinking into the hands of Zayats and uh, Thunder will play safely in their triangle for now. This is where that mech doesn't feel as good anymore. <laughs> this is where you wish you had a bit more scale or even four staff. It's going to help your cores deeper into the game. Yeah. So once more, Thunder feeling like they want to fight. Aegis is still up for two minutes here. Uh oh, this is kind of awkward. Zayats well positioned on the high ground here. He might break it. There is a ping from Matthew. Gonna break it for sure. The cause on the Radiance river. Wow, look at them. They're actually sneaking around Zayats here. Might be able to find the right kind of initiation. They get Rezo first off. They're gonna get the spear immediately afterwards. This time around, they chain stun him down. Zayats trying to get on top of Matthew. At the same time, look for Chrysalis as well. He's playing the back line. Looks like he's getting out of there, but Nisha's going in there with his Bloodstone and his Aegis. He's ready to fight. He's ready to bring down the Mars. The spear goes off. The last bit of damage isn't quite there. Meanwhile, they're playing away from Nisha at all costs. Everybody else running away from the last track and killing anybody else they can get their hands on. Now with a buyback coming out from the Snapfire, they can try and go again here. See if they can kill Nisha twice. Chrysalis might be needed to help out. A roll in, immediately silence. Pops a Manta, but it's too much. Pekaz gets bursted down. He didn't expect that one. The spear goes out. Getting them low, but without the Morphling, now they've lost so much of their damage. Now it's Secret who are on the hunt but they don't really have, oh, maybe they do. The Blink Dagger forward from Nisha is gonna be able to slow down and get one more. That's Panda. 
Of course, the lane can't sustain that much damage. Buyback from Matthew there as well. That was an insanely well taken angle from Thunder. But Kaz was in the river, and I think Zayats was calling out, hey, they're in the river. Instead, they were on the exact opposite side of that flank. Caught Rezo off guard. That's the name of the game. Marcy down without BKB. Still, all of that chase was for Anisha Aegis. Even yeah. if they get in there, he yeah. still has Aegis up. A little bit of an overextension, perhaps, but at the same time, that is how Thunder plays. They are always going to try and push that numbers advantage, and if they pull it off, it looks absolutely amazing, right? Yeah, it seemed like maybe that was a call from the one TI veteran here on the side of Thunder, uh, Matthew. I'm still amazed at how much net worth Bacaz draws in in these games. Like, oh yeah. I mean, he, that was his first death. He was Dyer's nine and zero, but is under he is farmed. He almost has Ags. It's gonna be pretty nice as well. If you can get the axe from the drow, remove that axe, it really hurts this hero. Yeah. He's also doing a mad amount of work with the stealing the Earth Spirit, though. Getting multiple silences, disrupting the supports. I mean, the Earth Spirit and Disrupt are getting silenced in these fights. Where is it coming from? Well, it's uh, the cause spirit, right? Yeah. And that's uh, something that's secret. I mean, it means they, they kind of need to play around each other as much as possible. Otherwise, this Morphling's just going to go from hero to hero, as they did in that last fight, right? They were just running away from Nisha and running into everybody else. Yes. Like, Mars is going to be able to tank up a lot of damage. You almost don't want to overfocus him if you're secret. You need to keep this Morphling in check because Morphling will win the fight for Thunder. Yeah. And nobody else is going to carry the fight in that later half, right? It's about him being able to stay and deal the damage. It's also about when he uses BKB. We saw Pakaz holding his BKB until the very end of that fight. Mm -hmm. He is extremely patient with it, and there's a reason. Like, he needs it up to be able to fight the Lashrak so he can't Bloodstone heal. He needs it up to be able to dodge the silences in the later half of the fight. Initiation is still the name of the game here for Thunder. They do not, I don't think they want to go ultra late in this type of game with how they've itemized and how their lineup functions. So again, another smoke. This is uphill. Yeah, very clear divide on who controls what part of the map. Thunder invading into secret side. They don't have the right vision here. Matthew, his smoke breaks. He's going to deliver good to the side. Sacred, he's fishing in deep, but they're not going to find anything. Oh, no. Knocked him down to the low ground, and now the back line is being assaulted as Nisha crept through the stairs, gets on top of the two supports, annihilates them. Rezu is keeping the Morphling busy, so that Morphling isn't going to be doing anything here. Pulled back in. He's going to have to use his BKB. That's going to be another charge down. A spear goes out, but the stun landed. That's the Mars caught as well. Darbago. He falls. Three dead on the side of Thunder. Secret and their patience in holding their side of the map is well rewarded. That's just an impossible formation to just go into like that. Zayats is holding his high ground ward. Nisha and Puppy with the glimmer behind him on that other cliff. It's just so deep. Sacred's looking for the roll and looking for the chain stun near the cliffs. But good luck, my friend. <laughs> it's just so hard going dark. And they need that initiation to land. If it doesn't land on a good core here, all of a sudden your back line's exposed. Arena latches nothing. Akaz gets stunned by resolution. Your backline crumbles, the fight becomes harder for this Morphling. He just has to spend BKB getting out of there. Nisha gets to clean everybody up. I mean, that is literally the ideal situation for Secret, right? They, they kill the two backline supports that do a bunch of damage. Yep. Uh, Rezo is keeping the Morphling busy, so he's not able, Kaz isn't able to go and just like kill the Disruptor or whoever, can't go for the Drow. And on top of that, the worst part of all, perhaps the initiation totally wins. Yeah, if, if Arena and Roll don't connect and chain lock a core, it's a completely different fight for Thunder. Like you said, Morphling getting controlled, he didn't even get an opportunity to Axel the Drow if he wanted to. So now it's a it's a push towards Scotty, and to me that feels like the last really big timing for Thunder here. They get this Scotty on the Morphling, it's going to debilitate the Lashrak a lot more in the fight, help him man fight him. You have second Roshan coming up within that interval as well. Secret's just gonna play for it. I don't think they're in too much of a huge rush here. They have BKB on the Earth Spirit now as well. Drow is just continuing to power up. Hurricane Pike level 21. You have the extra multi-shot damage online. It's gonna get powered up even more through the sidekick. Half the gap pulls this hero now, or she's gonna shred you. So I thought the I pointed out the mech earlier, uh, which I thought was really interesting on the Snapfire, particularly because 
no Wraith Pact. And that item is, <laughs> everybody's talking about it in this tournament. We finally do have it now, just now picked up for Secret. So that'll help slow down the damage of the Leshrac, who currently Nisha Radiant's seems to be the biggest problem under for Thunder. Very pivotal Radiant's item. Radiant's Courier has been killed. Mitigate the Leshrac damage, buff up the Morphling damage. so good. Puppy is halfway to Ags as well, which if this game goes late, Radiant's seen Disruptor Ags destroy attack. these cores in those scenarios. Pace. Secret on the prowl here. Yeah, this time it's Thunder who have set up in a part of the map and are Dark waiting Mago. for Secret. Oh, Dark Mago, don't get caught now! Get stunned up, follow up, chain stun. He's already dead and they've already stopped the Snapfire from being able to do much. Nisha gets on top of Manamu, should be pretty easily there. But Kaz is trying to keep his supports alive, whoever's still left alive inside of Thunder, and get them out of here. But the chase goes on. His resolution looks to be able to chase back. With the buybacks coming in, maybe they can catch something. Oh, no, Sacred is annihilated. They do have the arena, though. Drow. They've caught the Drow. All important because lays in the damage, and that is Chrysalis dead. Immediate buyback, though, as Thunder need to be able to retreat out. They've got this Wraith back. Maybe because doesn't feel so bad about this. I... It depends what happens to this Roche, right? This fight is all about Roshan in the next few minutes here. Yep. This is why the buybacks are getting expended. They got the Drow buyback out of that at the very end. Yeah, for, for seemingly for free. I mean, they, they're not going to be able to Roshan, take Roshan for this, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance maybe they didn't try and force it. And it makes Dark Mago feel a lot better about his, right? I mean, oh, yeah. He had to trek all the way back to mid after he gets gone on here. Maybe trying to bait the initiation just doesn't get the BKB off Rezo instantly blink bashed him i think very fortuitous and of course your front line gets broken your cm your snapfire are instantly gone nisha is always just going to absorb their life force yeah and a big part of this was the fact that panda <laughs> lived there and nisha had to chase him down so nisha during this entire river fight is actually still chasing panda moo over there in the triangle so he was just missing for the ad engagement which could have made a big difference, but it looks like Secret in the end, the buyback is worth it. Chrysalis is going to be able to take the Aegis and the, the all-important Aghanim Shard. That is a really big pickup, in particular against the Morphin. Absolutely. He's not feeling too bad about that buyback anymore. Now he'll get the uh, upgraded Frost Arrows. And we get that Hypothermia stacks coming into play. Reduce the regen. This is the Scotty timing for Morphling, so... Yeah, how close are this regen reduction coming out? Radiant's bottom tower is under just attack. so hard to fight into the Aegis now. Yeah. This is where <laughs> this disruptor pick, you know, he's he's growing his way towards that Aghanim scepter. Mm. Felt a little far away, but every one of these fights, every one of these objectives that goes in Puppy's pocket, this man likes to get rich. He yeah. uses it well. It's a very pivotal item in this game, because every time one of those jumps happens, maybe that Mars can live in that scenario and get his BKB off if he's not chain stunned. Well, you throw the Disruptor Storm on top. There's absolutely no turn. Yeah, I just kind of want to see one fight where it's Secret who, like, either missed the initiation or are getting initiated on, right? The last couple of fights, I feel like Secret have set up the fight better than Thunder has, they where it started, how Thunder it started. In, right? Yeah. They're forcing, they're either jumping, I mean, Dark Mago got jumped a couple times this game. Yeah, that was awkward. But a lot of these fights have been Thunder smoking into them into the high ground areas, trying to take that fight. Now I think Secret's very confident to take the aggressive positions because they have so many BKBs in. Of course, Radiant's I think Nisha top is, uh, top is using up a lot of his rune luck this game, I must say. Top Another top arcane top. bottle for this <laughs> Lashrac. Yeah, How and he's got a is enough. He's got a blink sight now. So look for this guy. Uh, he's just I feel like he's gonna see something and just go. He's gonna blink, scythe, BKB, and you know, chainsaw, whatever here. Oh, and this would be a perfect opportunity. Okay. Kill the enemy carry, the best pickup possible. 90 seconds, no buyback, and they know it too. Yeah, they saw him buy out for this, Scotty. They are definitely going to push the high round here. Age is still intact. How is Arcane Room pop for the left? So he's oh sacred. Up. He wants to kill the creep wave because they know they can't. That he has to slow down this push up into the high ground. But he put himself at risk of being glimpsed back or caught by the Earth Spirit. I don't think Nisha's afraid of anything without Picasso alive. Three thousand yeah. HP blast rig on top. Next round of creeps coming in soon. So backdoor protection is going to fall in the tower. 
It's gonna fall with it. Margo. Oh, pushed him back in. Oh, what an arena! And he's got the refresher as well. If he can line this one up, throws out the spear, but all the BKBs, all this magic damage is being ignored. Even Nisha able to blink away in the midst of all that. Chrysalis somehow ended up back up on the high ground. Not sure what happened there, but he should be fine. He's got the Aegis. Thunder doesn't want to go outside of their own base right now. Double arenas expended. 30 seconds left. Secret are going to call it though. They're going to retreat. Oh, if you get spear stun there, Ooh. that's a shard spear with the level 20 talent, man. 3.4 seconds of stun on multiple heroes. Imagine he can land those right there. Secret were, a, I don't think they were expecting that jump. Yeah. Because the BKBs were slow. They got him off eventually, but they really could have done some serious damage there with the double spear if it hits. Yeah, let's launch that one again. He gets he the spear. The Look at the towers just like right there. Oh, and it man. falls right as he throws out that spear. I don't know what happened there, but that is just so heartbreaking for Dark Mago. It made her, I mean, it was a great play all around, no matter what, because they ultimately held, yeah. right? Where they could have lost the lane of barracks, but you got to feel for him hitting a spear oh, that, that spear good. Lands. You, it's a guaranteed refresh double spear. Yep, yep. Then you're feeling real good. Then you would have held four versus five, gotten a bunch of kills out of it. Instead, Team Secret walk away relatively uninjured and happy. 7,000 net worth lead for them, 24 to 20, 37 oh minutes in. Lord, Pecan says no. Oh, roll in, roll out, and Sacred. One again. He's going to try, roll out again. but he just keeps rolling, rolling, rolling on out. You're going to have to retreat and blink out, my friend. Otherwise, you're going to get caught by Nisha. Otherwise, you're going to go. Oh, the spear comes in. Dark Mango says hello. They're going to chain on him a little bit, but they don't have the firepower. Not without Bakaz there. And it's probably for the best that they back up to their base. Ooh, if Bakaz was there, Nisha might have been in trouble. But yeah, abusing that high ground ward, which did not get killed. Zayat's just getting in there, placing it, getting out. Oh, you talk about ruin luck. Look at that item. Misha just oh, found himself God. a timeless relic. What is this? <laughs> I mean, sometimes the stars just align, right? Yeah, it seems like it. It's aligning for Nisha right now. This always happens to mid players. You ever notice that? Yeah, yeah. It's always the rune luck, you know? The rune luck, the neutral item luck, but he's an absolute. I mean, he's still got a cloak. He's going to turn that into something. Yeah, we got the Aghanim Scepter now complete for the Disruptor, so that's coming out right now in the Courier. As the Aegis expires, Dying secrets still have under big power spikes coming through. We got the Daedalus almost done for Crystalis. This makes the, the rebound initiation a lot stronger, right? You also have this level 20 talent for Marcy. It's a decent stun duration now. You throw the Static Storm on top. It forces Thunder into a fight where you probably have to use buybacks because that core is just going down, right? Nisha's going to jump in. You're going to commit the BKBs. Makes initiations a lot more concrete for Secret here. It means the quick reactions are super important, which I always feel like is super tense as is going late game, yes. but also on a TI stage, which Absolutely. four of these members of Thunder haven't been here before. First timers for them. So if they the see the Earth Spirit roll in or the rebound coming, if they pop the BKB fast enough, it could be a team fight game changer. Yes. Also, if they get the jump, right? yes. this game is so much about who jumps who. Uh, you have this Mars looking for the multi spears. You have Zayat and Nisha looking for the blink hex, the roll in. Ooh. These are, this is what's going to determine the fight. You also got Trickster Cloak for this Morphin. This is a very big item in this game in terms of his survivability. Mm. The magic resists the evasion. Yeah, that's some extra invisibility to dodge some spells. I mean, when every hit from the Drow Ranger decimates you, a 20% evasion could do a lot. Asher for Sacred. They're gonna so find a little more BKB control as well. They're gonna find that ward? Oh, no, they're not. They're, not. they're gonna get initiated on first. Nisha, not even bothering to blow the BKB. He knows this is an initiation that Thunder cannot follow up on. But Brezzo jumping yeah. in, Blink Dagger immediately goes for the grab. Panda Boo is going to be first. They still have the rolling out on Sacred. The he needs to be able to jump away. They manage to get the Hex of the Morphling with the follow-up stuns, and they're chaining him down. That is just a dead Morphling. Dark Mago did what he could to stop Chrysalis's damage, but ultimately it's the Leshrac who wins the fight. And now they will chase down for as many heroes as possible. Brezzo getting up and under that Snapfire. Triple kill for Chrysalis. Add another one on the mix. Panda Moo roasted by Nisha in the Fire and Flames. As now Team Secret look to just potentially end the game. We only have two buybacks left, and Thunder was already having a hard time. 
don't know how they could possibly do this without their supports. Nisha is just playing out of his mind right now. Another arcane rune fight. I think Makaz wasn't expecting that Hex to be that low of cooldown. Yeah. I mean, he jumped Hex the guy, they kill him. And then he basically got blink hexed again. It's just so hard. They're gonna force the buybacks here. Our team secret gonna keep the pressure up. Are they gonna force Thunder to use more buybacks? And are they gonna continue to assault and see if Thunder is gonna try and take the fight? Right, this is level 25. This is five. Level 25 dive all healing. They got the initiation, but this time they got the morph off strength. Can they keep him changed on? Can the damage get enough? He's getting blown up for the BKB. He goes off the way for him over to the side. Because it's reset. Science chases after him, but it's already done. Pakaz is healthy enough that Science will be the victim instead. Dark Mago chasing after them, but he's got to be careful. Doesn't want to overextend. They have the buyback. Secret's coming back in, but Dark Mago's already dead. Rolling Thunder on up. They cannot let Team Secret walk away with this. Because is coming back. He's TPing in. But sadly, I don't think they can chase after this. You can see Matthew setting up with his Aghanim Scepter. They wanted to keep going, but now Nisha oh, seeing them on the retreat with the Rolling Thunder on cooldown. There's the Hex. Resolution also catching that Snapfire. Sacred is still alive. Never mind. Rezo grabs him, toss him back in. Turns up into that rolling form, but blink away. He's good. No physical damage came out. Team Secret will keep the pressure up. Four of them alive versus the three of Thunder. They're going to take a second lane of barracks. Thunder can't excuse this if they want. They've got a tier two up in bottom. There's no chance Omega's Secret will just take that second lane of barracks. Reset. Wow, Seeker really respecting what this Morphling can do in a deep base scenario. Because they know this Mars has no buyback. They have another Static Storm up. They have everything up on their other heroes outside of maybe some PKB cooldowns. Maybe that's enough to dissuade the fight. But man, with that level 25 Edict talent, I would have thought they would have pushed Throne there. Yeah. At least try and force some more economic damage out of Thunder. Certainly an opportunity was there for Secret to potentially end the game, but they respected Thunder's potential hold as the Morphling you said, but they've got super strong initiation. Still 30 seconds, no Mars. Yeah. This is maybe just the, the smarter play here. Puppy with the smoke. Bear will jump anything and everything. Nisha goes in, blind blink in, goes to the site, immediately fights the Pango. A huge opportunity. Two dead already. Two dead with Thunder. Limping along as is Team Secret. Are they going to keep going? I mean, Roshan's up. Maybe a little detour towards Roche. Never hurt anybody. They're, they know there's no buybacks on this Thunder slide. So that's another 70 that you're without this control from the Pangolier, yeah. without the rate pack. Just keep them, keep them with the numbers down. And this is an Ax Roche. Five. I mean, are you giving it to Nisha here for some nihilism? He's done a pretty damn good job this game. Yeah, he has. Maybe, maybe a little awkward with the Drow Ranger, but he dives in, I guess, deep enough that it probably doesn't matter. That's pretty much the only choice here. Uh, Puppy has his, and Zayats has one of his own. So he can stone run and kick out as well. Yeah. We almost have the Blink Dagger on Puppy, which is huge when you have the Aghanim Scepter, because now you could solo initiate team fights instead of following up Rezos. Too many things to think about here for Thunder. One ward gets placed, one hero gets spotted. Ooh, the uh, waveform charges. The cause jumps in, jumps out. Dark Mago pops his BKB. They get a decent initiation with the Crystal Maiden oh, on top oh. of that, thanks to the Sapphire. They're doing lots of damage. The BKBs, though, are allowing them to persevere. Because turning into the Drow Ranger has to keep his distance Ash. from resolution. The badges are too much. He needs to get on top of the Drow Ranger, but he turned into stone form. Zayat saving the Drow, kicks him across. Because on the hunt, has to wait for him forward. He desperately wants to kill for the Manta Dodge. Another hit miss. The down the side. Now they turn around, and there it is. Because gets GG. blown up, and immediately the GG is called. Team Secret will take game one in this upper bracket match. They put the Makaz Morphling to bed a little bit there. Did not feel like the Thunder aggression could come out in that game at all. Just clinical gameplay from Secret. The Rune control, the Roche control. Against Team Secret in the group stage, they lost that game, and then they went in to go into game two, where they managed to bounce back and get a victory off of, big part, Dark Mago Zeus. And now, in this upper bracket semifinals, one game down, they turned their attention once again to that Zeus. Dark Mago does not play too many heroes, but the ones <laughs> he does play, he plays quite well. Oh, yeah. And yeah, Zeus first phase, it's one way to either clinch your berth or uh, go down to the lower bracket. <laughs> Very risky hero. In my opinion, the first phase versus Team Secret, I think they're one of the better teams to react to something. And in the end, I mean, they get this resolutionless Shrak last pick. I think it's something where it could have been anybody's hero going into anywhere, but instead they're trying to address the Slark. Not a huge amount of gap close for the Zeus.
I, I, I feel the there's, a, there's a silencer global. You can up the tempo with the Ursa, but if this game goes very, very late, you're fighting into Nyx, Tide, Zeus, Ultra late game, could get a little that spooky. That so said, good. this is kind of a cooldown heavy lineup for Thunder, right? Not something I think they're super used to playing, and something Ursa tends to abuse very well. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see how uh, that lack of, of gap close. I mean, do you think uh, Crystallis is going to go for, like, how quick do you think he's going to go for a Blink Dagger in a setup like this? He's going to be thinking about it. Because he does want to hurt his own scaling into the game, right? But at the same time, they really only have Marcy. I mean, maybe you could go the Blink Dagger sort of build on, on Rezo that we saw from Nisha last game, but off lane, last track, not exactly expecting the same kind of farm. I mean, there's two factors, right? A lot of the Ursa to this tournament have been going the Battle Fury build to just scale into the late game. Yep. And the other factor is, you know, your Team Seeker. If Greed is an option, yeah, it it. tends to Greed it out. You know, they're not afraid <laughs> yeah. to play that triple carry role. Just play it safe. And again, this Thunder Lion, I'm not sure it can punish it too hard. It's kind of like you want to hit your big spells, get good core kills with them, and wait for this Slark to come online in the late game fights, play off the Zeus, Zeus vision, get some pokes in and out. I don't, I don't think it's going to be some super fast game from Thunder, though. I say that, and they're the team that can often surprise you even with some clunky heroes. Do you feel like they've set themselves up to not be too pressured if they go into the late game? I mean, they've got some very good scaling heroes as well, right? I think so. I think this Nick Zeus opener is designed to be like, all right, last game felt very hard to take those late game fights. I don't think we want to be in that position game two. So we're okay to slow it down a little bit as long as we can make sure those later game fights feel better because you're not going to run Team Secret over. I think we learned that game one, they are too clinical, too good at playing around their vision, too good at shutting down the aggressive moves. You're going to have to face them in this 30 to 40 minute period and win the game there. And that is where this Slark starts getting the essence shift up. It's become very scary for this lineup. It's an old school silencer counter as well. I don't know if we're going to see the Slark Shadow Blade playstyle, but it is a hero that can eliminate vision from the map and make the fights very awkward for this secret support duo. Well, they may have gotten the early ward pickup, which is really good, not just for gold, but experience too. But Thunder, do you get three bounties? Are they going to pay for it though? Looks like Matthew will, as the next stand is going to be coming up. He pops the very fire, the splitter lands though, and Resolution picks up the first blood. Very nice start for him. That is a big kill to give away. I mean, you're giving this off lane like Shrak a very large head start against Slark. She's going to be very happy to abuse and the cause also choosing to let this block his wave and let the first wave under his tower. So this lane is going to shoot out very fast. Normally something I don't enjoy doing with Slark. This hero isn't that good at abusing heroes early. Yeah, Generally want to play for that level four to six type area where you at least have some stats. What is the point of ever pulling the creep wave under your tower? It pushes out, is it for what? Like trying to get pulls off? I mean, if you do it well, you can almost guarantee a level two first and you can try and kill them with it. You're also going to double wave them. So it's harder for them to aggress on you Radiant's and burn your region. Sure. So in that sense, it might be safer for Picaz. But I still think after the first blood and the wave being up this far, Rezo has got to feel very good right now. He's sitting on extra stats, extra range versus double melee. Lane. They put Matthew down here as well. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. Normally we try and pair up range here with the uh, melee heroes, so we have this nice spacing, but uh, they keep Pandamu at top lane. I think they're worried about this Ursa Tide matchup, but probably for good reason. You put a Nyx Tide up here versus Ursa. Fuzzy Wuzzy, it's not going to make your life happy. So I can understand that switch, but I am I am worried about this Nyx Slark lane. This is not a strong lane by any means. And it's just giving Rezo free harass for the entire period. Kaz just go down. Sleep. He's gonna have to blow the stick charges and barely squeeze right on by Zayat to keep himself alive. But staying alive is a far stretch from being able to win the lane. Even being fed all these tangos isn't gonna change much. He's gonna have a hard time approaching the creep wave with this kind of kill power. This is gonna be tough side lanes for Thunder. They're gonna have to play them very well over the next, you know, the early game to get out of them in a good shape. Not like last game where they had all the new power in the world to just sway those core matchups. That, that always feels bad. Using a spell and still getting it tonight. Puppy is gonna die in the top lane, so the combinations of slows here. And the crystal main pop of the mangoes, they're gonna catch him too. They managed to grab mid-jump there, and a finishing blow delivered by Panda Moo. 
Looks like the decision to put the Crystal Bay in the top lane has won a matchup that normally is not won. Uh, Tidehunter versus Ursa. Normally, that's a freebie. I'm not sure Secret should be giving up the kills on this lane, but of course, Sacred and Pandamu committing to all four nukes on this lane early to, to get those kills, and that's a huge payoff for them. Anytime you can swing these bad matches for Ty with Gush, you're very happy. Oh, gets the pounce block. Oh, this time, Science stays in front of him, and they're going to get the maybe the plus one. He does have the mango, and he can pop the spike hair base just in case. Doesn't get hit by the split earth, though. That is not going to be the worst death for Picasso. It drains Rezo of all his mana and gets to come back full. Sacred getting glaived down at the end of this. I'm going to have to walk the base here. Lucky yeah. he has boots to not feel terrible about it. It's kind of a similar situation, right? Where they, they killed the carry, but here's it comes right back in. They blew all those mangoes. Now they no longer had that, so. Well, Picasso in trouble again. Hit by the split earth. It's this combination of being able to jump in, follow it up with the split earth is just too damn powerful. Science is not able to deliver the final blow underneath the tower. Comps a bit of damage for his efforts. Where, where are the salves you need on this lane? He is trying his best to abuse flag bears and tower again. Decent hero to do it. And he even had to go the boots early just to try and live through these, these rebounds that are really messing with him. And the weird part is they've got a mid Zeus, so it's not even Radiant like they have a mid hero that can rotate fine. to the side lanes early and help them, you know, disrupt things a bit. Nope, but he can provide that ult. If you do end up in a trade scenario where people are low. Yeah. I mean, all things considered, these side lanes, I feel, are actually going decent for Thunder. Like, I don't think Secret's too happy with this top lane because the main went up here. It really shuts down how much Ursa can just run tied down the lane. Mm -hmm. So Sacred's having a pretty free one. And yeah, Picasso is getting abused bottom. But it's not worth it. isn't looking too bad. Going better than you would expect, right? Yeah. That said, I'm not sure this lane gets much better for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we'll see how this top lane goes as well with Yersa now being level four. Mid lane, though, bright, shiny part there for Thunder. Dark Mago. He's uh, almost to his six. His top CS on the board, so he's faring very well against Nisha, which is pretty impressive considering uh, the power of the Kunkka. The fact that he's got boards and eyes is pretty nice. I mean, and the power of Nisha. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> he true. The top three mid laner in the world any day of the week. Yep. And Dark Mago got the better of him in both games. Impale, but. Spike Carapace will help defend against this damage. It lasted just long enough to split Earth. He's going to pop the stick, but I don't think he's going to be able to block this one off. He has a Fairy Fire, but the, just the constant attacks coming Revive. from Secret will ensure the kill. Boat coming in. Boat. Our Zeus in some trouble. He's going to try and hop away, but of course he still has that curse on him. It's taken away, but I think it's a low level, so really not doing that much damage. Dyer's we'll live, 25 health, and we'll have the bottle Dyer's refill from the Nyx Assassin killed. dying. They're also probably going to try and secure these power runes coming up in 10 seconds. Yeah, timely death from Matt. You're going to get the refill, Dyer's salve him up as well. Guys, he's going to have to hop his oh. way into the trees. They do manage to get the kill on Nisha with the two supports rotating in. Because... He's going to be found eventually here. There's really no way out. The cause suffers, but they get that Kunkka kill mid and rune for Dark Mago. He gets the Thunder God's Wrath kill as well. Huge start for this mid Zeus. And this is a hero you want to have a good start in this game. Okay, Picasso is suffering, but with the lane setup you have, he's going to suffer no matter what. Come back in this game. If this Zeus is strong, it's, it's the hero that can shove these waves out, stall the game. Oh, oh, look at that read. Damn, that was a good torrent from Nisha, but still gonna be punished here. moving forward. Pandamu and Matthew both coming back into play, oh, and they're go. gonna kill him twice. He just TP'd in. He's gonna have to make the walk of shame back to lane now. Very nice play. Thunder just reading that Nisha's gonna be here and no help in the world. Zayat's also not choosing to join those engagements. I mean, he is a Marcy, he has TP. Choosing instead just to, pri to prioritize the side lanes. I guess they're not too worried about Nisha's game here. He's going to be utility. They do have two damage carries between the Ursa and the Lesh. So him having the best game isn't essential to Seeker here. It does mean that uh, without the support in the top lane, the Tidehunter is having a little bit of a rougher time. I mean, it looks like his net worth is still perfectly fine, but I would imagine the Ursa 
able to put some pressure on him every once in a while. I mean, if you're in this position with Tide versus uh, I think you're pretty happy. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you try it for him, you're. Oh, nice well. double stun, and the rebound doesn't land, and they're going to be able to get on top of the last strike here. Vikan is playing the distance, wants to be able to land that final pounce to ensure the kill, and they get it. Dark Mago also joining in on the fray, ensures it. It's huge. Nice rotation from Dark Mago to help clean this up. He's using his start, his strength to get his Slark back in the game. On top of that, permanent agility stolen. Every little bit helps. Sacred, did you see a world of difference and maybe reason why he wasn't uh, being pressured harder than he was? The early phase boots pick up, allowing him to live there. Yep. Hey, David Power Rune is top, so no refill on the Zeus bottle. Oh, Nisha with the haste up. rune. He's gonna try and catch the Zeus, and he does manage to land the torrent into the X, into the boat that's coming in. Matthew's gonna try and stop them, hits the stun onto the Marcy, throws out whatever damage he can, but it's not enough to get a kill, and he's certainly not enough to keep him alive, as Panda Moo's gonna be the next victim of the two supports, Zion and Puppy, making their way deep into the Radiant base now. They're gonna split up. One goes north, the other goes south, ensuring that one of them will probably live through this, and Radiant's it's not Puppy. Not with the night vision. <laughs> <laughs> not with the night vision, and not without a oh, TP scroll. Right. Another stack for Fakaz. Of course, Puppy claiming some stolen int of his own. Always nice to get. Yeah. yeah. Sacred just not able to get attack. to that fight. He was trying to get resources. Maybe if Tide's there, they can turn it with the Ravage. I think that was the dream scenario for him. But Secret good at abusing that, and of course abusing the haste rune for Nisha. Able to close the gap, get the boat. Very nice turnaround kill for him, and it'll help him move into the jungle and clear some stacks. Get right back attack. on track. Uh, bounty. Sacred. Say he needs some help, but there's well maybe Crystal Mane's TPing. He's gonna throw out the Ravage. And if they try and chase, Panda Moo is here to defend. That is the Ravage down though. Secret gotta be pretty happy with that. Good old zoning Ravage, you know? Yeah. Farm, farm a little <laughs> small centaur with it, maybe. I mean, what are we gonna be building for the Tidehunter in this kind of game? Well, it's always right back, half. It's always right. You wonder what an off laner's building? It's right back. <laughs> I mean, the, the regen, the scalability, especially for Slark, right? This is a hero where lifesteal just helps him so much. Extra tank ability helps him so much. I mean, it's pretty much every Agi carry in the game. Yeah, it is kind of hard for Slark to play against Slashrack, right? Because you can't defend on your ultimate, that, all that AoE damage going around. So yep, anything yep. that can limit the impact of Slashrack is going to help a lot. Absolutely. And even shutting him down by getting kills would be even more important. They're going to get on top of resolution here. Do they have enough damage, though? The pounce is stun blocked. The stun's chain stun coming through. The Slark dies, and Rezo is able to keep his distance. Stays alive through it all. Global on top to secure it. That's something you're gonna have to think about that this game if you're so Picaz, right? Good. You get stunned all of a sudden. You don't so see a dark pack. You just global. Slark is in big trouble in this type of scenario. And nice rotation from Nisha to clean up too. Another unsuccessful turnaround from Dark Mago. Still having a great game here on the Zeus. Once more, this is not the fastest lineup from Thunder, so they're okay giving up some trades. Zayat, far forward here. He's gonna be hit by the pounds. Matthew's gonna come in. And maybe Diets, he's trying to gun for the kill on Bacaz, but he popped the ultimate just in time and the finishing blow was delivered. But if the Kunkka can keep everybody around, Redzo will certainly clean up the kills and it's gonna be Matthew who should be dying here. It's gonna take a little bit longer than maybe they expected, but he does get run down. Mid lane. Dark Mago trying to kick Puppy out of here so they can get some more damage onto that tower, but Puppy does a good job pulling the creep wave behind so the Siege Wagon dies. Nyx has a decent Radiant's amount of levels this game. You're gonna have to think about the Vendettas, especially in the he pushes into Thunder's territory. They want to have Seeker go into them to take the fights. That's where Zeus, and especially this Tide, who isn't gonna have Blink in this game, can really thrive and set up the fight for Makaz to clean it up. On the flip side, this Lestrak is perfectly happy just pushing your towers down, especially when those ults aren't up. Seeker can claim a decent amount of territory in this time. It's gonna take a while before Makaz really wants to join the fights. Whereas again, you have this Ursa. Start clearing through jungle and Crystallis is choosing to go for Diffusal this game. So he is not opting for that heavy farm Battle Fury build. Secret's gonna up the tempo here in the next 10 minutes. That's pretty interesting because I feel like almost all years since I've seen him be going Battle Fury yep. in this tournament, but nice fight Carapace. That'll help defend the Zeus. Rezo. Shows up, they drop the sentry, spot Matthew, who's trying to get to the edges of it, does what well, they can before he goes down. Here comes Yursa, and he's gonna clean up the Crystal Maiden, and Dark Mago, 
barely gets out before the X. Ravage going down, but nobody's really around to take advantage of this one. All of Secret is just going to turn and rip into that watermelon, take the sweet juice inside, and go for mid lane push now. Slide. Super discoordinated fight from Thunder. They, they just aren't ready for the Secret incursion yet. If they're all there, they can maybe get a turnaround or a kill. Yeah. Invisibility. And this tempo, they don't have big cooldowns they really have to rely on for the skirmishes. Sir, you have global silence, but it's not necessary. Isha is just running around the map, setting everything up. Invis bottom. And dark packed Invis room. He's just going to take, oh, trying to take the CS. Missed one of them. And then just kind of a noise because. Especially if Nyx dies early, it's hard for Thunder. Yeah. They really want him to be alive so he can get the care if this is off on the Lashrak. Lesh is just so much of Secret's damage right now. He has free reign in these fights. Nyx is down. It's gonna be hard to just commit in, and even Crystal is joining this, cleaning up the Crystal Maiden. Back in the live we go. It's Thunder. Bit of aggression. Gonna be stalled here as Secret. Look to grab Pandabu before he can get out. The X will ensure it. A little small hop away there with the Tumblr's toy. Gets him out of range with Zayat. Matthew showing up. X Margo's trying to bait down. It. Matthew really wants to go for this one. They have Whoa. the global silence though to be able to help out. Dark Mago backing out under the tower, but a jump forward from Science. A double kill pickup for him as Thunder just really not bringing the same kind of numbers secret due to these fights. Oh, they are getting out skirmished and heavily. There's a lot of stolen in going to the silence or two already up to 16. Damn. <laughs> really? The puppy, he's a smart boy. I guess so. The reason why he's been a captain in Dota for so long. I mean, I can't help but feel some of it's been stolen from this maiden because Panu is sitting at 450 mana. <laughs> this is uh, getting a little bad for him, you yeah. know? Yeah. Crystal okay, main spells are not the cheapest. The spot. Might be needing to put more points in that aura at this rate. Watching Disha currently uh, farm up some ancient stacks. Once he's done with this, he'll have BKB. So that'll be another big timing for Secret. Between the early BKB, the Diffusal Blade pick up on this Ursa. Team Secret are going to be really hard to fight into in this around this 18 to 20 minute marker. And this is all for that Roshan. Crystallis is happy to go in there whenever Seeker feels strong enough. He has the Morbid Mask. He's going to Diffusal build. That is a fight Thunder have to think about. You have Bloodstone on the track. You have that Kunkka BKB like you're talking about. These are very tanky heroes. And you don't have the easiest ways to initiate on. It's pretty much Nick's been deadying in and stunning people, which... Yeah. Seeker's going to have sentries down. And they're not even really waiting. Just smoke Crystallis in. Two man it up. Roshan is pretty much dead here. Uncontested. Psychic makes it really easy for the Ursa. Combine that with the ultimate there of the Marcy as well, slowing down the attack speed of the Roshan. It falls pretty quickly. Thunder, either unaware or uncaring, will give up the first Roshan of the game. Sacred, he's going to be hovering around this mid tower. He's got the Ravage. They're going to try and hold this mid tower for as long as possible. I expect Secret try and challenge that with the Aegis sometime in the next five minutes. I think Secret's definitely going to make a move. This Tide needs Wraith Pact. He is a long way away. This Zeus ideally wants his shard. He will pick it up now, so that's a huge damage increase for him. Very big timing. And more interesting, perhaps, is Pekaz has gone first item Mage Slayer just in an attempt to deal with this Lashrak matchup. Who, I mean, Lashrak is the carry in this game, right? He's yep. just going full carry items. You need this item in the matchup. I don't blame him, but the damage output diminishes quite a bit. In which case, it, it just means the Zeus and maybe the Nyx and Crystal Maiden have to do a lot more of the heavy lifting. I mean, it's even more on Dark Mago's shoulder. Yeah. And then you really have to take a long fight as well. If these heroes go down for Thunder quickly... That's Crystal is immediately challenging Sacred. They've got the Axe to be able to keep him in place. He's going to blow the Ravage now. See if he can get away. Chris is going to try and chase Nisha. him down. They don't have the BKB. Oh, now he gets it off as the Global Silence also protecting him. Nisha will get the X. With this double damage, it's a little hard for Thunder to fight, but they can keep on the edges of this. They got to be careful to Zeus, though. He's still silenced up. Uh oh, he needs to be able to jump away. Crystalus? Okay, there goes the Aegis, yes, but the other heroes are on top of the Zeus, and without the Zeus, there goes the damage. Saker comes back in, but he's just going to be another victim, and the X marks the spot, reeling in the fish. A double kill for Crystalis and a mid tower for the taking Team Secret. This game is escalating out of control very fast. Makaz didn't even want to join that fight. Of course, he didn't have teleport, so he couldn't have if he wanted to, I guess. 
Yeah, a little more damage, maybe Kunkka falls there, but it's a pretty good Aegis usage. Now you're pushing the lead to 5k, you get the tier 1 mid, map opens up. Just an awkward Ravager, right? Like, it's getting forced, you don't want to Ravage Aegis Ursa. They almost chain it well into something. Maybe if there's a Maiden ult here, it turns a bit better, but... Yeah. She's just too tanky, double bracer, BKB rush, you have the global to bail him out. Puppy holding on to it. Dark Mongol gets a lot of damage off in this fight. Can yeah, but then he's so long. slowed down by yeah, this curse. Uh, curse. It's a hard game for Sacred at the front line. You have yeah. Ursa to cut through him, you have Lashrak to cut through him. The X. Difficult tight frontline game. Still trying to get to that Wraith pack. The start he had was solid, but since then, nothing has gone his way. Yeah, and I was just kind of curious if, if he would deviate from the Wraith pack simply because of the fact the Earth is such a big problem. But so is the Lushrak. So he kind of has to go for it, and he has to frontline, but he's going to be victim of this Earth all the time. It really seems like a no-win scenario for Sacred. Feels like there's a little too many problems yeah. for itemizing. It's just going to come down to one of these weird fights where somehow Pakaz gets on supports, trying to go ag so he can find the backline. If he can start on Slark, start on Marcy. I mean, I say start on Marcy, but Sats is sitting at 1,800 HP with Ogre Club. He's not exactly squishy. See if they catch the Slark here. The smoke across. Not going to be able to find him. Pakaz is able to get the pounce away first. So he'll keep the hopes alive of an Aghanim Scepter pickup. Slow down by the curse. Panda, I think you're going to have to play a little bit of a sacrificial lamb here. He throws himself in to make sure that his Zeus does get out. Of course, Sacred is like, please, no, not my ancient stack. I'm so poor. Let me get the Wraith back, please. Oh, it's all being taken away from him. In fact, even his life might be taken away. His resolution's going to cut across with science. He's going to throw out the Ravage, but the boat is still on point. It's still going to hit that stun. And now with the Marcy there, booster. he can't even get to the point booster denied with the death Return loss as well. He is still shy of that pickup. Oh, this would be a dream pickup, but there's nothing there to follow it up and a global silence to ensure there's no escape for a Nyx assassin. Yes, level two Thunder's God. Might have been close. That global doesn't come out. Very quick reaction from Puppy, nonetheless. And yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a Ravage to try and buy a point booster. That is, uh, <laughs> that tells you all you need to know about the state of this game. When you put it Not like that, it, well. it looks pretty dark. You didn't even get it either. <laughs> and uh, Comp by just the constant jumps in from Marcy. Anybody shows the mid lane, Marcy's gonna be there quick and fast to punish. Silence is okay. Dark Mago is really getting up here. He's going to pop the illusion to get rid of the curse, but he won't be able to deal with that X. Cool they do have a cost showing up finally with this Aghanim Scepter and might be able to get the kill on a puppy. The Gush gets it, but at the same time with the Zeus dead, it's going to be hard to play this out. Science, second pounce, catches him as well. Two kills for Thunder would be pretty nice. Sacred with a double ensures that his Wraith Pact is going to come in a little bit quicker. Nisha, who blew his BKB earlier, Held the Shadow Blade though. Yeah. Get him out of dodge. Not the worst fight for Thunder. They get their Slark involved with that Ag's timing. Pick up two kills. You'll take that. Dyer's middle tower is under. I mean, we're attack. seeing how aggressive Puppy's playing too. He has absolutely no fear. Oh, that is a nice TP deny. They can keep the pressure on this mid tower. Dyer's In fact, they get it. That little play may have just gotten them the bounty on that mid tower. Sacred takes the last hit. So big time recovery for this tight under who's been suffering. Got him to his Wraith Pack. Showing some signs of life here for Thunder. A little momentum swing. Will it be enough, though? The Wraith Pack will stop a lot of the damage, but Secret still up by 5k. They're an item or two ahead. And also, what can Pakaz do with this Aghanim Scepter? We saw in that first fight, used it pretty decently to kill the two supports. You want Silencer every time. Yeah. Take Silence out of the fight, it opens it up a lot for Zeus and Nyx. <laughs> Sacred and Nisha having a little fun here. Both of them actually baiting a smoke behind the uh, individual core standing in front. Oh, they are finding Puppy on the back. Oh, puppy, this would be so good. The, the smoke's gonna break. He throws out the curse. He gets a force down to the high ground. The second pounce doesn't land. The Ravage doesn't land either. And now he gets off the Disaster. global. He's getting all the spells off with the quick turnaround on it because it all falls apart for Thunder off of some nice 
quick moves from Puppy. He pulled out all the stops on that one. And put on his dancing shoes today. Ooh. Just super fast four staff reaction. That Ravage puts absolutely nothing with the BKB reveal on the track. And fight's pretty much over at that point. Cause is too invested and too silenced. Very nice read by Seeker. Puppy felt that one coming. But they had a great angle. Yeah, they really did. With the rest of them on the high ground, BKBs all going off during the Ravage. And even the global. That's a nice finishing touch there on the end. Just beautifully played by Team Secret as a whole. Radiance yeah, that's almost where you want the Nyx leaking so you can guarantee that kill. Yeah. Instead of the pounce, but maybe just not expecting that four staff to be up yet. It's also hard to just run in with Nyx this game. Now, there's a single sentry, you're getting global. Nothing can come out from the rest of his team to bail him in those scenarios. Yule Scepter, Ether Lens. Mark Mago is trying to keep up as the Zeus. I mean, he was once the highest net worth in this game. You see he's had a little bit of a precipitous fall. He just can't keep up. Not with the, the amount of real estate that Team Secret has been owning throughout the last 10 minutes. They are gobbling up the map. Make a move towards top. They had a pretty nice defensive ward there on the side Dyer's of Thunder. All right, Matthew killed. kills Tristalis Courier with full BKB. Ooh, that's a nice pickup. A lot of net worth. Pretty much the best thing he could hope for in that scenario. Is that enough for you to make the call like, guys, we should smoke? I just took away the BKB, or do you think it's still risky? I don't think you can smoke into Seeker here. Maybe Seeker goes into you and you can take the fight. Maybe. Or maybe just leave Pandabu behind. That's Roshan. That is Number two. Second Rosh. This is where things start getting really scary for an Ursa lineup in Aegis. Now the Shard. I feel so bad for this mate, man. So much intelligence stolen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's really not progressing there, is he? Racking up the end. That is Shard for Ursa. You know, this is the dream Ursa progression. Do the first Roche pretty early. They got it with the smoke and Marcy. Second Roche, 24 minutes, put that shard online. Yeah, you're missing BKB, but I don't think he cares too much. No, I don't think so either. Not with the constant enrages. They're already having a hard time addressing him. Coin for me. Full Silver Edge done for Nisha as well. Uh, there's a break for this tide. Radiance Even harder to front line. I mean, I don't think he was attack. front lining much before, but now he definitely is. Do you think he should continue to build on that and try and build up a physical damage Dyer's build, or do you like what he's attack. currently going, the scythe build up? I think the scythe is Radiance fine here. I mean, this team secret lineup does not lack damage. Yeah, sure. Remember, Crystallis wants this diffusal damage oriented build. You will have BK Basher at some point. You have a carry Lashrak in your off lane who's doing just fine, and of course, Marcy. You know, Marcy's Marcy. <laughs> yeah, Marcy's Marcy. Enough said. You know? uh, uh, They're not going to lack damage, so Ishii can just go whatever he wants, honestly. Awesome. Go with the AC, he can go the Hex here. The Hex is definitely nice for the Sark control. Or if you find the Zeus, right? You stop some of these leaps or duels. Just guarantee the highest damage kill. Matthew, I mean, this is. A sad affair when you're using the Vendetta to try and, what, hunt down Dyer's Couriers? I mean, he's certainly not attack. strong enough, I think, to get a solo kill unless it's on Silencer with the Thunder God's Wrath. But even then, I have to question if they have enough damage. Pandamu. Well, he's been just kind of playing forward a lot. I, I don't think he really cares too much about his own life. It feels like just he's just kind of fishing for information, right? They got to just buy time yeah. more than anything. Dodge, split the lanes. You're gonna lose out on some net worth, but try and make Secret run around and uh, Sacred get spotted. Someone has to play the party here. Yeah, and it's gonna be the Tide Hunter. So that Heaven's Halberd, which he was trying to get to address the Ursa problem that he has, it'll be delayed even further. So Because he did manage to get out, and he is closing in on a BKB. But it is a very small silver, silver lining, a very attack. big and dark, scary cloud. You know, Matthew, he's looking for that Ursa Courier. That's why he's not killing these. Yeah, he's he trying to go that, to the... Yeah. He wants the BKB again, but he missed it. That was the oh, one Courier that went out no. the fastest. So Crystallis already has BKB, and Matthew's kind of... I know what's coming. He yeah. read the timer very well. Actually, yeah. a very intelligent play. Just not going to get it. Damn, that is... That is and now he sees a run back. He's like, oh. <laughs> oh. 
Well, they know the BKB is now complete, and same goes for Pekaz. In fact, they even put a gem on this Ursa. Puppy deciding to be generous this game and donate some of his net worth to ensure this Nyx has no free initiations. A blink dagger as well. So BKB blink, Ursa, you're 100% online and you're trying to take 80 fights that you can get. Thunder are being rather elusive though. They are doing a decent job of not being caught on their, well, I was gonna say their course, but mostly just because Dark Mago. He really wants the Aghanim Scepter. He's trying to farm it up with Zeus right now, but he's gotta be careful, gotta respect. Dyer's courier has been killed. That's a BKB, another one BKB tonight. The decent pickup, you waited a long time for it. So you're gonna have to use it here. Of course, Aegis is still up for a minute. You're gonna have a window where they don't have that. Aegis is down. You have your Slark BKB. Maybe you can get to this Zeus Ag. Regeneration. That's pretty much all we're looking at in terms of the next timings here for Thunder. All right, you're gonna have a Halberd on the Tide, but at some point you're gonna have to win a fight here because you are losing a lot of net worth in the period where you're just letting all three Seeker Cores have free reign. Evans Halberd complete. I don't know if it'll ever save Sacred, but it might stall his death. A few extra seconds. Bottom. Nice torrent. Good read from Nisha. They're going to go for the break as well to ensure that this Tide Hunter doesn't have a single prayer getting out of this one. The tier two is going to be run down pretty quickly. Secret. Bit by bit, taking more and more control of the map, increasing the pressure on this chokehold over Thunder Awaken. Nice little play from Nisha there. Just taking the guess. You know, you never know. Someone might be lurking and get you a free Tide kill. Every little thing matters. And of course, Matthew's still hunting for some courier. Which one's he gonna choose here? Oh God, I bet he wish he was playing a bounty hunter instead. He doesn't want that one. No, 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 no. He missed the Lesh one. No good was. items. Oh, oh no. That would have been a decent pickup. It's taking me back to Boston Major. Here. Yeah, seriously. The bounty hunter courier snipe. <laughs> Maybe next time just hanging out on the enemy side of the map, constantly looking for courier kills. Vendetta is not the best, he's definitely not the best Invis hero to be making these plays. But there's just not much else to do, right? Thunder just nope. cannot fight, they understand that, and they're really just waiting for Secret to either force something by going high ground, or they get to a point where, I mean, what, what point is that exactly? What, like, what items do they need where they're like, all right, guys, we can win a team fight? I'm not convinced there is an item. Refresher shard from Roche for Tide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, know. yeah, yeah. It's gonna right. have to be some base defense fight where Secret overextends. Yeah, I like, think. I don't think like you can fight outside the base anymore. These heroes are just too tanky. And Secret's not gonna give you any freebies. No. No, they're not. They're a very disciplined okay. team. That's the first Thunder God I've heard in a while. Yeah, he just was fishing for information. Hadn't seen any heroes from Team Secret in a while, so. Okay, Wanted to make sure he wasn't getting ganked top lane. Wanted to finish up his Ags, which he will. So now you have a bit more global uh, pickoff uh, potential. We can kind of see where this lineup was supposed to be at this point, you know, where Nyx and Zeus could have threatened heroes along the way. Yep. I'm not sure you're threatening too much outside of uh, some more couriers you're scouting. Let me tell you something. This courier hunting looks a lot more fun than it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> Is he gonna take one? Yeah, the losing game probably doesn't right, feel so right. hot. All right, got the Ursa Courier. Hey, there we go. And you know what his reward is? He is level 10. <laughs> he is level 10 at 30 minutes because he has not seen a creep in a very long time. Yeah, who needs uh, levels in mana burn? It's true. Science is done with this. He's like, all right. Enough of this Nyx assassin nonsense. Find some Rezu pairs up with them. They don't actually get him. Is that? He was too close to the Lesh Rack for the rebound to land, I think, so. Some space. I mean, honestly, even if he dies, he's so low level. It doesn't matter. He goes back in 30 seconds. I like how he set up this this uh, series, you know, Thunder Awaken, you know, the, the number one in average kills and assists. Not this the team in <laughs> it's, oh, I mean, it counts if you were talking couriers. Two masks on this brigand team. I mean, all that said, somehow, because Radiant of his top net worth, scanning. Yep. it always happens. And finds it. He he's knows where the gold is. And he's got Titan Sliver. He's got Skullbasher. Level 20. 
first excursion outside of the base for a while. Thunder. Smoked up, spot res though. Puppy's gonna break the smoke though. They're immediately gonna jump onto him, but the force staff gets him away. And Marcy, oh, there That's goes the Nix assassin, blown up immediately by the help of Nisha. Sacred in the middle of all this. No he ravage. has to wait out the BKBs in order to get a good ravage off here. They're gonna reset. Secret doing the same, respecting the fact that with the BKBs on cooldown, there could be a big ravage play, especially with the buyback coming in from Matthew. Awkward initiation, but that's it. Thunder don't lose too much, and they know there's no BKPs. This is one of those windows where they can try and make a play. Yeah, but how do they do that exactly? I'm not sure if they have any smokes left. They don't have like they don't have a blink on Tidehunter to like really force a good team fight with Blink Ravage. It's kind of weird. I almost feel like they just they're gonna go back to farming. I feel like they need this blink. Because Pekaz can't just jump the silencer and make it a good fight. Yeah. It's just a four staff out, and then you're getting global after the dark pack. So it's very awkward in terms of initiation right now for Thunder. And I was like going to ask said, if maybe Nyx can get a blink dagger, but then I remembered. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he hasn't been doing much. <laughs> but that's his buyback. And oh, this, this cannot go on. This cannot go on. They can't be giving up Roshan while BKBs are cooled down oh, and no Ravage way. is up. Oh, oh is. no, Thunder. What have you done? They had to play for this Roshan. I feel like this is one of the only moves they had. Now they've given up an Aghanim Scepter to the Urso. So now even if they hit a good Ravage, Rosales could just knock it off anytime. He doesn't care about anything anymore. Takes the cheese, takes the Ags. And he just on to Rezo. The bear feels so strong, he doesn't need the second life. Well, this is truly going to be just an all-in high ground defense, I think, at this point for Thunder. And Secret are probably at the point they're feeling strong enough, right? Third Roshan, a fresh Aegis, we've got a Cheese. Like, they are so far ahead in net worth at this point in time that I mean, they would love to get a pick off first. Panda move escapes just barely. Matthew may be able to do the same here. If Secret can't find anybody in the next two or three minutes, feels like they may just brute force it. I mean, they really want to find the pickoff. Just yeah. forcing the high ground for the is... Sure, you're up a lot of gold, but it can be weird, especially with buyback. Can we get something here? Ooh, nice reaction from Bakaz. Gets the pounce away before the X could catch him. More courier hunting. <laughs> here it attack. comes. Ursus Matthew. Matthew. Hey! <laughs> He'll get the observer for it, too, so it makes his life a bit easier. Yeah. Another 45 seconds. Well, actually, 60 seconds for him to really get out there and wait for a while. We'll see another courier pick off, perhaps. Rezo doing a little pokey. Pretty low on mana. But yeah. Of course, second light. We've got the Aegis. They're going to burn it. Radiant's now, plenty of secret heroes are around, so it's not like Thunder can really keep going here. Panda, hello. Thunder God's Wrath going out, spotting all five of these heroes because maybe he can jump on the silencer. He's going to go for it here, but once again, the four staff is going to go down. Nisha lays out the boat. Seeker trying to position here. Pops a Ghost Scepter, waiting out the BKBs, and gets back up to the high ground. Nice play by him. Crystal is trying to chase after, but now he's inside the base. Now they have an opportunity for a Ravage, perhaps, with Sacred continuing to hold. Very patient there. I love the way he played forward and then used that Ogre Club totem to be able to jump back inside the base. He knows this Ravage cannot be used lightly. No, you have to threaten it and at the same time you have to be super patient try and wait out those BKBs and then turn. Double damage. The longer you wait, the higher chance of cause maybe dies in that duration and if he goes down, you lose a huge amount of your sustained damage. Of course, you can rely on Zeus in these high ground scenarios, but Secret might not keep that to you all the time. Don't get me wrong, Very Secret, precarious. they are smashing this and the status quo has not changed, but it is impressive that Thunder just have it straight up lost yet they like the the way to play these fights has to be so perfect they've been doing a great job of it so far they have blink on tide now now they they've got a real window. possibility right yeah they, they can blink ravage into the nimbus nix can follow up maybe marcy saves you maybe the global bails you out there is that window and of course they have multiple ghost scepters as well no real nullifiers or anything from the secret side so these ghost scepters are doing a decent amount of work yeah, Zion's has already made that read. He's going to try and build a nullifier. It may be a little while for this forward position to get it, but he is at least aware of how strong this item could be. Yeah, when your forward position is building nullifier, you feel pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Radiant's he's going to. I mean, he's going to jump onto that Zeus and never let go.
I mean, at this point, Secret's gonna have five carries, right? Yeah. You should, you should build some attack speed on Silencer. He's got the hint to do it. Yeah, he's got 32 stolen intelligence. Waiting for the runes. Waiting for next Roche, perhaps. I don't think Secret's in a rush. Yeah. Maybe the courier. <laughs> They're trying to speed boost out of that tier three, tier two area as quick as possible. I mean, I'll tell you, they are microing these things. <laughs> yeah. There's a refresher flying out for Nisha. So you're going to have double BKB, double hex. Could catch these heroes off guard. Have a camera as well. Just even extra tanks. Smoke might actually catch Thunder. Thunder was being very patient, just sitting inside their base, but they're poking out now. Team Secret. They get this opening. Now, Secret's gonna be the first one spotted here. The Tide Hunter, the big front line. He's gonna break this smoke, get a lot of information for Thunder. He can choose whether to engage or not. I assume the answer is probably a no, as it's been for the last 20 minutes or so. <laughs> I can't believe Puppy just walks into these areas like this. You know? <laughs> yeah, yes. Just walking in, gets a Nimbus. Like, eh, whatever. I mean he really hasn't been punished for it yet. Like, so many times he's been pounced on, yes, but they haven't been chased on. Once again, he's got the force to have to go for it. Vikas is going to keep going here. This is pretty crazy. He immediately jump in there. Sacred's going to have to wait out this BKB. Once again, the situation. Vikas playing it slow, yes. taking the damage. They've got the ramp thrown out now. Chrysalis does manage to get off the end range. They do have, he gets his ultimate, and also the shard being thrown down. Vikas has got to be able to jump away, though. The damage, oh. damage of the last strike. He managed to get it right in front of Crystallis, but the Hex landed as well. Gets up to the high ground. Gets that speed boost, starts regenerating away. Resolution though, trying to catch. Nice, Yule Scepter barely in time to stop the split earth. Zayas jumping in after him into the base, but Dark Mago is already away. The two supports die on the side of Thunder, but the core is not dying. We'll keep this game stalled out, I believe. It is still going. They were close to killing that Ursa. That Ravage comes out before the cheese pop. Oh, it's yeah. For sure. Misha looking Back for war here. Four. Up. Tier fours are up. Next Roshan is coming in soon. Two minutes to be exact. Gotta abuse that Slark night vision as well. Mm -hmm. Their best entry into fight guns. They're never gonna have a really good war outside of the, the Slark initiates. You can plan an ob later. Yeah. That's why Puppy is so confident because they just know they have no vision. They've had that gem forever. Stop. Starting to poke this high. No ravage for 60. Like just throwing himself in there. See if he gets out, the splitter doesn't land. We're good. Vikaz, oh yeah, he needs a force snap out of here. He's in a little bit of danger. Vikaz gets on top of him, and they do have Saker to follow up as well. Vikaz realizes as soon as the last track shows, he's got to get out of here. The Ogre Club doesn't give Saker quite far enough. He's going to be chased down with the magic damage. A resolution on the side. Science is going to be able to finish off Dark Mago as well. Vikaz turns around, does the damage onto the last track. He needs to be able to keep his back up against the wall. Make sure nobody gets in front of him. If anybody stops his pounce, he's dead. He now has to blow the BKB. He jumps over to the side and TPs out he will get away but the rest of his team has been devastated by this they throw buybacks and still haven't gotten a kill out of it absolutely nothing going thunder awakens way in this fight and crystal smells the blood yeah that's gonna be another death for panda moo and a chance to break the high ground looks like it's secret finally gonna crack it open what will come out there low resources but doesn't seem like any of them are close to dying. Puppy is still eluding this Slark. Yeah, of course, that and a Ghost Scepter. And the rest of his team being so mobile, they can come save him anytime. Yeah, Makaz really needed that Abyssal, and he might never get to it at this point. The repeat glyph here. BKB is up for Nisha now. Now, the Nyx is in the trees here from the side. They try and get a sneaky impale. Ravage that going pretty down, good. the pretty decent one, but they can't really focus any one hero down. They don't have the damage, not without Slark the Zeus. Attacks. And now with the Slark hexed up, it's a chain stun combo that will ensure his no death. Buy. Dead for 85 seconds. No buyback and Sacred falling as well. Also no buyback. This is looking like it's over. That's it. GG Secret. Absolutely no mercy whatsoever. Fully disciplined, controlled the game from the get-go and make a clean 2-0 victory over Thunder Awaken. Oh, what a clinical series. I mean, that first game was just so disciplined by them, and this second one didn't feel like Thunder even got one good team fight out of that whole no. game. Just ratting and ratting, trying to get to a point where the Slark can come online, and by then, 
all of Secret's five carries are online. I mean, at that point, you're not killing anything. Puppy just so elusive with four staff glimmer. That's a top three for the second year in a row. Puppy has got to feel good about.